Johnny Dollar. Uh, this is Mr. Ernest L. Whiteman, Providential Assurance Company. Providential Assurance? Uh, that's right. You've heard of us, of course. No, sir, I can't say that I have. But uh, what's on your mind, Mr. Whiteman? Embezzlement. Don't try it. Uh, what? Well, I'm going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. Uh, I beg your pardon. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just trying to make it funny. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, now, if you care to look into this for us... Sure. Why not? Then I suggest you come here to my office and I shall give you the details. I uh, take it there's a fee here in addition to my expenses? If you recover the money, something over $200,000, you can practically name your own fee. Great. That is up to, say, $5,000. On a $200,000 loss? That's right. Oh, well, then maybe I'd better figure on padding out my expense account. Oh, no, just a minute. Sir. Oh, stop worrying, Mr. Whiteman. But if you have any intention of... Just keep your up... shirt on. I'll be able to see you. CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. best-selling records. Here's a familiar tune about America's best-selling filter cigarette, Winston. Winston gives you real flavor, full, rich tobacco flavor. And you know, that's because only Winston has filter blend up front. Choice, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. No wonder Winston tastes good. Like a cigarette should. Smoke Winston. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Providential Assurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Now, at this point, I don't know if it's the home office or not. Anyhow, following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the hand of Providential matter. For some reason or other, dealing with a new company usually spells trouble for me. But expense account item one, a buck and a quarter for a taxi to the offices of Providential down in the square. When I say offices, I mean exactly two with a connecting door. I'm very glad to see you, Mr. Dollar. I'm Ernest L. Whiteman. Mr. Whiteman. And this gentleman, Mr. Dollar... I'm the man that had Ernie Whiteman send for you. Yes, this is... Mr. Name is Elwood Sprague, Dollar. I'm the owner of this business. The uh, sole owner, Mr. Sprague? That's right, son. Providential assurance is all mine. Lock, stock, and barrel. Oh, I see. Made a lot of money in oil down Texas. Couldn't find any way to spend it all, so I started this year. So what happens? All I get is more money out of it. Yeah, well, uh, Mr. Whiteman said something over the phone about an embezzlement. Exactly. $200,000 that uh, was taken ahead. from... Go a... ahead and tell him all about it, my boy. Tell him how it happened. Well, you see, Mr. Dollar, immediate public acceptance of our company is largely due to the what fact that... What he means, Dollar, is the reason we sell so many policies is on account of... We always pay off any claims real prompt in cash, in hard, cold cash. Exactly. And for that reason, Never we... Never question a claim. Just pay it off in cash. That's what we promise, and that's what we do. And for that reason, Mr. Dollar... That's why so many people who can't afford much insurance come to us. Uh, yes, but as a result... Oh, so we... what happens? Instead of a nice tax loss, there ain't enough claims to fill your hat. All we make is profit. You mean you've hoped to lose money in this business? tax loss, Mr. Dollar. You ever have to pay the taxes on profits from a couple of hundred producing oil wells? Eh, uh, hardly. But now, Mr. Whiteman, about this investment... Yeah, as I started to say, paying off in cash as That's we right. do... That's right. means keeping a lot of cash on hand. Oh? Then this embezzlement was of your own money? Exactly. The money was stolen from us. You kept that kind of money here in, here in a safe or something? Well, wouldn't keep it laying around on the floor, would you? <laughs> Well, have you any idea who might have taken it? We most certainly have. Sure. It was Hauser. Tom Hauser. 
The only one beside Whitey had the combination to the safe. He also kept the books, Mr. Dollar. Well, didn't you check his books periodically? Oh, of course I did. But when I discovered the loss this morning, I also discovered he'd been juggling the accounts. Well, how long ago did this Tom Hauser work here? Up until yesterday. As I told Mr. Sprague, I informed Hauser last night that I planned to check the cash as well as the books this morning. So what happens? This morning he's gone, and so is the money. Well, Dollar. When you ask me, this sounds like the most loosely run insurance company. Mr. Dollar, how you ever managed to get a license from the insurance commission? Well, now, that license is something we ain't bothered with yet. You what? You got to make sure we got a business first, don't we? Are you kidding? Do you realize what the commission will do when they find out about this? Don't give it a thought, son. To say nothing of the police. Your job is to catch that Tom Hauser. look here, Mr. Sprague. Then, if the insurance commission or the government or anybody says we're doing wrong... And you can bet they will. Why, then, I'll pay up and get out of this business. Believe me, it'll cost you a lot more than this $200,000. Well, sure, maybe a couple million. It'll make a nice tax loss. Yeah, and you'll probably end up in jail. Well, now, you let me worry about that. Your job is to get this embezzler. And don't forget, we're paying you 5000 to do it. Look, you say it may cost you millions to get out of this mess. That's right. And yet you're worried about a couple of hundred thousand? Well, now, that's different. Huh? That was stolen, son. That was illegal. Trying to make sense with this man was like trying to reason with a hitching post. I told him I didn't want the case and that I could understand why he'd hesitate about calling in the police. Sure, they'd probably start asking questions. With well, the only answers he could give them, he'd really be in trouble. I told him that my only duty, as far as I could see, was to notify the commission of this whole operation. Sure, son, if your conscience hurts you, go ahead and notify him. After you got this money back first. After? Well, I don't know much about investigation, but it seems to me that with him gone only a few hours, well, if I was you, I wouldn't be wasting any time. Now, you got a point there. Sure, sure. And don't you forget that five grand that's waiting for you. Well, I ask you, what would you have done? And with a fee of $5,000 dangling in front of your eyes. Yeah, that's what I did. I took the case. Two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Higginbotham here. We will now commence our lesson in stereophonic reproduction. <clears throat> Listen to the call of the spotted bill snicker on ordinary stereo. <coughs> now then, on a Columbia Stereo One phonograph. <coughs> Obvious difference, what? The Columbia stereophonic system really causes all others to blush. For it is not composed of just a few separated speakers. Columbia is the originator and exclusive purveyor of stereo projection. Only Columbia fills every inch of a room with real, lifelike sound. Now, when I was bird watching with the Duchess of... <laughs> but let that pass. You simply must hear the Stereo One phonograph by Columbia. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer for a demonstration. And, chaps, portables are priced as low as $39.95. Consoles commence at $129.95. Lost that bird. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Hand of Providential Matter. Hoping the insurance commission wouldn't hang me if they ever found out I'd taken an assignment from this outfit, I decided to check the last known whereabouts of the embezzler, the bookkeeper who'd stolen some $200,000 from them. After getting his description and his address from Mr. Sprague, I spent item two, $1.85, for a taxi to a dingy rooming house on the north side of town. At the front door, I was met by a frowsy old maid wearing a rather slovenly blue housecoat. She looked like she'd just gotten out of bed, and her stringy black hair was up in paper curlers. Special investigator, huh? That's right. Here, my credentials. Johnny Dollar, freelance. Well, Mr. Tom Hauser ain't here right now. I know. Have you any idea where he might be? I seen him leaving bag and baggage late last night. Guess he's gone on a trip somewhere. I was sitting by the front window having a can of beer before I went to bed, and I seen him get in his car and drive off. Yeah, well, just let me have the key to his room. Are you sure that's all right unless you got some kind of a warrant? Yeah, I'm sure. The key, please. Well, I... 
Ain't had a chance to clean his room up yet today. Don't do it. Don't touch a thing of his until I tell you to. Oh, well, now look, dearie, Judge, I... let me have the key. And here. Here's a five spot for your trouble. Oh. Well, now, you're what I'd call a real gent. And here's the key. It's the first apartment on the right, top of the stairs. Yeah, thanks. Is something wrong, Mr. Dollar? Let it be to do something he oughtn't have done. Uh, what do you mean? Well, what are you talking about? Hey, I had to come back here. Pick up my stuff. So he isn't here. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about the split. I'll meet you like I said. Yeah, then we'll take care of it. All right, all right. I'm leaving it right away. Neither Johnny Dolan or anybody else will ever... He what? <laughs> well, if he does, I'll be ready for him. Uh -huh. so come on now, hang up. Let me get out of here. Stop worrying, pal. I can take care of him and anybody else. Quietly as possible, I slipped the key into the door. I had some difficulty turning it, but finally heard the lock slip. Then I started slowly turning the knob. And then... Well, I'm not quite sure exactly what did happen, except the door was suddenly pulled open so quickly that... Okay, huh? baby! Oh! Hey, you want some more? Oh, uh, gee, I dare hanging around outside. Wait oh. a minute. You must be Dollar. Yeah, Johnny oh, Dollar. Oh, no. Then, baby, I'm going to make sure you never get up again. No! 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 Leave that wet rag laying there on your forehead. It'll make you feel oh, better. Uh, what? You, oh, holy. Yeah. Uh, you just stay there on the floor until you feel better. Where? Where'd he go? Oh, dearie. Who done this to you? You didn't... Didn't you see him? I heard a big noise up here, and when I run up the stairs, he must have heard me and run away. You was just a laying here bleeding this way. That window. What's outside that window? Only the fire escape. But uh, look, dearie. Yeah. Busted table lamp. This must have been what... Don't touch it. What? No, no, I'll... I'll wrap it in my handkerchief and... But who could have come here and done this to you? I can't imagine. Well, I can. Tom Hauser. <laughs> Item three, $1.20 for a cab to police headquarters. Anybody but Sergeant Ed Wilson would have asked a lot of questions that I didn't feel like answering. Ed simply took the lamp, told one of the boys in the lab to check, and if he found any prints on it to classify them, then send a teletype to Washington. Item four, a dollar even for a cab to my apartment. After a long, cool shower, I felt somewhat better. I just got back into my clothes when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Uh, Ed Wilson, Johnny. Uh, those prints on that lamp. Yeah, Ed. Uh, Thomas Harker, alias Tim Hosker, alias Tommy Hauser, alias just about everything else you can think of. Johnny, that boy is one of the ten most wanted. No kidding. And for everything from safe cracking to murder. You got any kind of a lead on him? Only that rooming house where he slugged me. Uh, then he may be a hundred miles away by now. I wouldn't bank on it. So, Ed, yeah? you'd better put out that good old dragnet. Oh, don't worry, Johnny, but listen, just remember one thing about him. Like what? If that boy thinks you recognize him... I didn't him, even get a look at him. Maybe he doesn't know that. And if he finds out he didn't kill you, Johnny... Well... He'll be back to finish the job. <laughs> Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Now, here's a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yeah. 
Ed. Ed? This is Pat McCracken, Johnny, at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Oh, sorry, Pat. I thought it was Ed Wilson again. Sergeant Wilson of police headquarters? Yeah, and listen, I'm in uh, kind of a hurry. Oh, then I won't hold you. I was just hoping you'd have time to look into what appears to be a phony insurance company for us. What? But... Keep talking. But if you're already working on a case... No, no, just go on with what you were saying, Pat. Well, we got a complaint about some new company here in town that we'd never heard of. Seems they're stalling on the payment of a small claim. Yeah, sure. In spite of their pledge to pay off promptly and without question. Yeah. Also to pay off in cold cash. Yes, that's right. Providential Assurance Company. Well, what do you know about them? Johnny? Oh, I'm working on a case for them. Oh, no. Oh, Johnny, don't. I telephoned the commission, you know, to find out who they are and yeah, where they the are. commission never heard of them. Exactly. So if I were you, until we can find out whether they're a legitimate outfit, Johnny, I wouldn't touch them. Hey, tell me, Pat, what will the commission do? Well, they've notified them by mail. They're sending over a committee to investigate, to look at the books and so on. When? The first of the week, Monday or Tuesday. Why? That may be too late. What? If that outfit's what I think it is, and if I can do what I think I can... Well, Johnny... Well, if I can't collect my fee and expenses from them, maybe I'll send a bill on to you. What? After all, I may be doing the whole insurance business a great and glorious uh, service. Johnny, what are you talking about? That is, if I don't get killed first. Listen, Johnny... I'll see you later. <coughs> hmm. Now the question is... But wait a minute. If Providential is what I think it is, where does Tommy Hauser's theft of 200000 come in? If he was working for them. Well, why did they call me in? Johnny Dollar. Hello. Uh, this, uh, this here is Elwood Sprague. Oh, yeah, Mr. Sprague. I, uh, wasn't sure I'd find you in. Yeah, I think I can understand that. Or maybe you weren't sure you'd find me around at all anymore. No, 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 listen, don't get me wrong, Dollar. I, I want to see you. I got to see you right now. Yeah, why not? They're at your office? No, oh, no, no. Well? Uh, my room here at uh, Guilford. And you'll come home... Are you alone, Mr. Sprague? Yes. Yes, Mr. Dollar. Will you come right away? Yeah, as soon as I can. Thank you. That's funny. If he wants to see me, if he is alone, or is this some kind of a trap? No, there was absolute sincerity in his voice. I was sure of it. Yeah, and there was something else, too. Fear. Maybe that was it. Fear. Hello? Johnny, listen, you said you'd been working with the police. So? Well, I knew I'd never get anything out of you, so I called them. Listen, if this Elwood Sprague of Providential has anything to do with the beating you took, has he? Pat, I'm on my way over to see Sprague right now. Well, I tried calling Providential. He isn't there. I know. But if he and that gangster, that Tommy Holland... Sorry, Pat, he's waiting for me over at the Guilford. Johnny! There was no time to waste. Maybe Hauser was still gunning for me, but if so, well, maybe I wasn't the only one. Item five, a couple of bucks for a cab to the Guilford Hotel. And there in his room, I found a very different Elwood Sprague than I'd talked to earlier. And the story that he slowly, nervously unfolded proved to be very interesting. So, maybe I didn't ever make no oil fortune there in Texas. It ain't so easy down there as you might think. But I learned to use my wits and my brains to get along by outsmarting the next man. You see what I mean, Mr. Dollar? Then those 200 oil wells you were talking about... Well, it made a good line. It fooled you, didn't it? It, it, it even fooled Ernie Whiteman for a while. That's, that's what gave him the idea. The idea for what, Mr. Sprague? Well, me. Me to front for this insurance racket. You know, collect a lot of premiums, and then we'd skip town. Right in the heart of the insurance industry? Always harder to pick out a bad apple in the barrel for, ain't it? Oh, brother. So what happened? That Ernie's a salesman, Johnny... When he got started on the country people around here, the money come rolling in. And when somebody made a claim, we stalled him on it. How long did you think you could get away with this? Until the commission got wise to us, then we'd move out. The commission was planning to investigate you next week. I know. Only by that time, we'd be out of here. Uh, you and Wyvern and this Tommy Hauser. Hauser. Ernie brought him in. He said because he had a record, the police would know about him, so he would take the rap if anything went wrong. But then he walks out with all the money last night. And then you sent for me. Why? Because Ernie and me go after Hauser. He might have killed us. Ernie didn't want to send for you, but I made him. I, I held a gun on him. Oh, real nice people. Because maybe Hauser didn't know you. Maybe you could nab him and get the money for us. So what if you did get wise to us? What, what if you, if we should have to cut you in to keep you from blabbing to the law? you rotten... Do you think everybody in this world is a crook? Well, at least it was better than leaving Hauser get away with all of it. Well, looks to me like he has so far. Well, Johnny, now listen. Oh, I'm listening. Now, now Ernie didn't know it. 
But I heard him on the phone. He was talking to Hauser. He was double-crossing me. They're meeting somewhere to split the money. Yeah, and, well, what and else listen, could you expect? Now, now listen, Johnny. Then, then they're, they're coming over here to kill me so that I can't talk, you see. That's when I phoned you to come over here. And you think for one minute I'm going to stick my neck out to save that lousy hide of yours? Oh, you got to, Johnny. You got to. All I got to do is turn you over to the police. The police? Or would you rather just sit here and wait for Hauser and Whiteman? Well? Oh. All right, Johnny. All right, come on. At least I may keep you from getting shot, which is better than you deserve it. This... Well? Ernie. Back inside, please. Both Ernie, of you. that gun. That's you... right, the one that killed Hauser when he tried to hold out on me. The one that's going to kill you, Elwood, for what I heard just now through this door. Oh, no, Ernie, please. I... I... Johnny. And, of course, that means you'll have to go with him, Dollar. Now, get inside that room. Pat, I kind of thought you might be coming over here. What are you talking about? After I told you where I was headed, you too, Sergeant. Sergeant. The police! That's right. So you'd better drop Look that. Look You think you're going to... Well, Johnny? Oh, thanks, Ed. You too, Pat. Oh, and Ed. Yeah, Johnny. Maybe you'd better put a pair of cuffs on Mr. Sprague here. You know, to... Keep him out of any more trouble? Oh, I'll go along peaceful. So the big fat fee that was promised doesn't get paid to me after all. And I'm sure I may as well forget the expense account for a change. But you know something? It doesn't matter. Because the important thing was to have had some small part in wiping out this dirty racket. Me? I feel good. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. star will return in just a moment. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is X-Lax in your medicine cabinet? Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a man who uses government help to promote his one-man crime wave. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Edgar Barrier, Junius Matthews, Jerry Hausner, and Lawrence Dobkin. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking. Next, the nerve-tingling progress of a man hurled into space from Suspense on the CBS Radio Network. Citizens of Troy, this is Neil Kelleher, the Republican candidate for mayor of Troy. I'm taking this brief opportunity to tell you that a Republican city administration will restore garbage collection and disposal to an efficient level. The Democratic administration, having burned out the municipal incinerator, has now returned to the ancient system of garbage and refuse disposal by depositing it on an open dump. I shall take steps immediately to restore the incinerator and eliminate the threat of stench and smog that will surely be blanketing the northern section of our city as soon as the refuse piles get deep enough and the underground fires begin to burn. I intend also to eliminate the noisy collection of garbage in residential areas in the middle of the night so that Trojans can get their sleep. 
If you approve of the foregoing proposal, may I suggest that you can assure it's becoming a reality by voting row A all the way, election day. Thank you.